So in this question, we're going to look at the basics of standard form. Now, standard form is uh, what happens when we express a number as one number times 10 to the power of, well, a whole number, an integer. Okay, And the rules are very simple. Uh, the number at the front, the A, as I've called it, must be between 1 and 10. Uh, it's not allowed to be 10, actually, which is why I've put... Uh, less than 10 there, but anything up to 9.999 whatever. In other words, there is one non-zero digit before the decimal point in that number. So A is a number with one non-zero digit. And then the N is, well, it's bigger than zero for what you might call large numbers. Okay, and that's how often we multiply A by 10 to get our original number. And it's less than zero for small numbers. And in fact, we're dividing by 10 there to get very small numbers. If you have to do calculations, try and do them on a calculator. But of course, sometimes you're not allowed to. And if you're not allowed to, just follow the normal rules, including indices. But we might need to adjust our answer to fit standard form, which will involve moving the decimal point and changing n. But we'll see how that works as we go along. So, a couple of straightforward parts to this question to start with. Write 3.56 times 10 to the 5 as an ordinary number. Before we do that, let's just look at this. This really is in standard form. The A, the first bit, it's a number between 1 and 10. As you can see, there is one non-zero number before the decimal point. And then we're multiplying by 10 five times, so it's going to be a big number. Right, let's do the question. Well, it's going to start 3, 5, 6. And the only question we have to answer is, how many times will we multiply by 10? Well, we've already said uh, 5 times. So the decimal point was here. And so we move it once, twice, 3 times, 4 times, 5 times to there. Now, there are some spaces there which we need to fill with zeros because we're multiplying by 10. So there we go. We've filled all the spaces with zeros. And so our answer is, just to make it absolutely clear without the arrows, 356,000, which I think you'll agree is a large number since n is greater than zero. Now, this is a very small number. It's less than one, much less than one. And so we're expecting n to be less than zero. And we are indeed going to divide by 10 a lot. Now, the first non-zero number is 3 in this one. So we're, uh, A, the bit at the beginning of standard form, is going to be 3.21. Now, where uh, was the decimal point to start with? Well, it was here, you can see in the question. And so we need to move it 1 two, three, four times to that position there, which is what we've already done. And because we're moving it to the right and we're making it very small, we're dividing by 10. And so the number at the top will be negative. So that four is a minus four. And there is my answer. Now I'm asked here to multiply two numbers in standard form together. I've got six times 10 to the 12 times 9 times 10 to the minus 5, so a very big number by quite a small number. Well, I've said follow the usual rules. And what do I mean? Well, let's write it in a slightly different way. Let's look at the sort of normal number bits to start with. The order of multiplication is not important, so I can rearrange them. So 6 times 9. And then let's look at the bits with powers of 10. 10 to the 12 times 10 to the minus 5 and I'm allowed to rearrange things because all the signs are multiplying. So what's 6 times 9? Well, your table should tell you that 6 9s are 54. And then we need our laws of indices. We're multiplying. There is another tutorial on the laws of indices, or the power laws, if you're not sure. We're multiplying, so we're going to add these two powers together. So we get 10 to the power of 12 plus minus 5, or if you like, 12 minus 5. So that is 54 times 10 to the 7. But that's not in standard form because the number at the front here 
is not between 1 and 10. It's 54. So we need to make sure it is between 1 and 10. So how do we do that? Well, we need to adjust our answer to fit standard form, which means we need to move the decimal point and change n. n is, of course, this number here. So let's try that. Well, at the moment, the decimal point is after the 54, so let's put it in the middle. So it's 5.4, so that A fits the rules. Well, let's just think about this. 54 is 5.4 times what? Well, it's 5.4 times 10, isn't it? And I've still got the 10 to the 7 there, and so I now need to combine the 10 and the 10 to the 7. Well, that is, of course, 10 to the 1, and we add the powers to get 10 to the 8. So I get 5.4 times 10 to the 8, and I have adjusted my original answer, 54 times 10 to the 7, to fit standard form. And that's how you do it.